Hello and welcome back. Welcome back to part five of our Gorilla Spring Collection Tami R16 scale um, motorcycle scooter build. And where we're at to right now is exactly where we left off in part four. Um, so if you remember in part four, I was trying to get the chain fitted on the on its location here. Um, but at the same time, I needed to line up the rear swing arm so that every would be, everything before I glued that, so everything would be the right length for the shock absorber on the back there. Okay. So what I've had to do was go ahead to step eleven and install this at least this shock absorber onto there so that all this is in the right position because I don't want to glue this in here. All right, um, it's partly covered by the crankcase cover here. So this will be going on there like that, okay? But it doesn't hold it in. It's not like holding it in position. Now the instructions don't tell you to not glue it. Um, they, they just, you just stick it in there like any other piece and glue it. But what I figured is if I glued this in position, then this, would not be able to move up and down because these springs work and this rear end can go up and down and if this is glued then that locks it in position and it won't be able to go up and down you see what i mean i mean you could do it if you don't want the back end to work but i do so so just as a tip there when you're putting this on and it shows a little arrow there in step 10 to put that into the hole where it is there don't glue it all right, but having said that, not glued means I had to fit this and get all this lined up and even put the, there's a screw that goes right through um, both swing arms at the wheel, that rear wheel, which we haven't got to. That's not till, we don't put the wheel together and still, until step 12 and we don't actually put it on till step 13, all right? Um, but if you don't put that through there, well, putting that through there helps line up that cog for the chain. Okay. I know these things are fiddly, but this is probably the most fiddly part. But it worked. So what I've done is I've attached there's a little pin that goes through the shock absorber and into that swing arm. And I've glued that in place. So this all exactly where it needs to be now. The other side will be easier, I'm hoping because the other side doesn't have a chain. Okay, so it shouldn't be so hard to line up. Um, but I've managed to get that on there and that's all fine. Um, now, I'm just looking, there's a, another rod that goes through here. This top end of the shock absorber is not attached. All right. And I suppose I should put the, um, the rod that goes through that in because it's actually tightened up with a nut on here so if that's all in position then i've only got to worry about doing the other shock absorber on the other side threading it through yeah okay uh it's interesting i just noticed for the first time here uh well i'll put step 11 up and you can have a look just under where it says step 11 there's that little j3 right and that is not a part that's actually a tool and that's a tool for tightening up the nuts, um, which is great. That's good. Um, yeah, very handy because we're going to need that. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah, let, let's keep moving on. Um, let's see what I can do while we've got it on, on camera here. Uh, I'm thinking about putting that screw. Let me see if I can find that piece so we've got this one here I think, i'm sure that's the piece yeah so this needs to thread right through here like this maybe now it could be the other one there is another one in here see that one in there that could be it there too uh it's a 44 millimeter long long one 
just making sure I've got the correct. I will. The best way to do this is to measure it. And I would say, yes, that's the correct one. It's 44 millimeter. So let me carefully turn this around. Just got to keep my hand on that cog in there because it's not glued in place. Just with a bit more effort. Yeah, that will go through. Ah, probably because. I don't know, it should be right. Let's try a little bit more strength. Okay. I don't know why it's not. Let me just move that for a second. Okay. So it goes in the other end, not this end. <laughs> Let's try it. Let's try this thing. Push it through that way. Oh, there we go. Just need a bit more strength. Okay, let me get this a bit further through. It's really tight. Very, very tight. Okay. I need to be able to use the end of my tweezers. Here we go. Good. That's looking better. There we go. Take note of that. Very tight fit. It's going to go on there like that. Before I do that, I need to push it in a little bit further. I've brought it out too far, I think. Whoa, <laughs> scared myself. All right, there we go. That's loosened it up. I guess that's a good thing. There we go. That goes on there. Good. I'm happy with that. Nothing's pinged off anywhere. That's important. All right, we're good. So what I'll do is I'll get the nut and that tool off and um, and screw that on. And um, I guess then we do the other shock absorber on the other side. Um, yeah, and then we'll come back to step 10 and we'll put the chain guard on and, uh, and the rest of it all here. But I want to get all this secure first. All right, I'll be back in a sec. Okay, I'm back. So I just put that nut on. Here's that little tool. And if you remember back in the first video when we went and had a look at the parts, we saw this piece sticking off at a strange angle on the sprue. That's what it was. It was the uh, tool to tighten these nuts up. So now we'll go over and we'll do the other side. Um, and now that's also made that more secure. So that's going to stay in place. So if we turn it over, nothing's going to fall off. Okay. So we need the other shock absorber, which is here. Make sure it goes on the right way around. <laughs> it helps. Um, so that's going to go in there and that's going to go there and as expected they line up perfectly that's what we like all right so there's another pin to go through like i did on that one um but first we'll, we'll might as well put the top on here this tiny little nut i managed to get it started just by doing this and you know, when you do it with the camera on, it's probably not going to work. But let's see.
There we go. Oops. Did my little tool go? Landed here. Got it. All right. So that just simply, there we go. Tighten that up. Perfect. All right. And line that up. There we go. Now I'll get the other pin off, which was number B8. B8. Where are we? B8, there it is there. That. And of course, we'll just. It's all about the detail. nicely good test fit uh, this is the one this had a problem before I had to um, scrape the end let's see if this fits like the other one did yeah it's been happening a few times through the build where these pins uh, just don't fit so what I do is I just grab this and I just just sort of whittle a bit off the edges of it. I know I'm taking the chrome off, but you can't see all this anyway. So just take the edges off like this. And this time, it's going to fit. Yeah, fine. Take that back out. There we go. All right, put a bit of glue on there. Move it over, turn it over. Put chain back in its spot. All right. There we go. That's good. Okay, so the pin's in. Oh, that's done up. That's pretty much fantastic. All right, good stuff. That, I'm going to keep that because that might come in handy in the future. In fact, my last model, I could have used that. But there's more, there's a few more nuts in that bag, so we're going to be doing that again. Okay, so it looks like we're good to go back to this side now. And... Um, I'm thinking of putting the cover on here now, should be right, or the chain guard. Let's have a look at that chain guard. That's going to sit. That pretty much just sits on there. Like that and that. Oops. That's going to sit like that. All right. While that's there, I can glue that from the other side, I think. Yes. Yep. I'll just get some super glue down in there and in there, and that'll be on. Then we can come back and put the cover on there. Let me just do this. I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so there's our chain guard on. No problem. And I just did a quick test fit of this, and that's going to fit in there perfectly. Uh, all I need to do is just scrape the edges here so I've got a better contact for the glue. And I'll just scrape a couple of points in there as well. 
so that I know that's not going to come off once it goes on. Um, yeah, pretty much just use the back of the blade like I've done before. That's all there is to it. Yeah. Sorry, I'm doing that off camera. Yeah. While I'm doing this, I just might mention that uh, it's really good having uh, more and more people showing up on the um, live streams I do each week on Thursday or Friday, depending where you are. Um, I'm releasing the videos on this build on the day before, so you guys can see it, and then we'll have a chat about it and uh, and look at what or, and I can get some live feedback from people. And their comments on their thoughts. That's good. That's good. Um, yeah, so yeah, you're welcome to make sure you've got notifications set to all. And um, I usually, um, oh, well, I will, I'll have this um, live stream. I notif I put, I schedule it uh, three days before. So people got plenty of notice and, you know, they want to come, they can make sure they're not doing anything at that time. Um, yeah, and you'll also get another notification if YouTube's behaving itself um, about uh, 30 minutes before I go live as well. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so you're welcome to join in. Um, it's just coming on all right. Just scratching off some areas there that are going to be attached where the glue is going to go. Carefully. All right, we're good to go. Okay, bring this back around. We'll just do another quick test fit. And that's pretty much it, just drops straight into place. It's sitting over the, lining up with the chain guard there. Um, nothing's in the way. Yeah, perfect. And I might, might clamp it just to hold it to let it dry. Yeah, I'll, I'll get myself a, a clamp for that. All right, I'm going to go and do this clamp it, let it dry, and uh, then we can go back and uh, there's a, a kickstart lever, one of these things can go on, um, probably glue that battery in so it doesn't fall out while I'm in the middle of the building, and um, yeah, all right, back in a second. Okay, so that's glued on, fine, right, we're just going to put that, put this chrome piece on now. I'll just use some, uh, oh, what will we use? Uh, quick set. I've got such a choice of glues here. Let's go with the liquid cement. Be sticky. And we just need to pop this in. Yep. Yeah. Run a little bit on the edges there, not much. Good. Pop that in. There we go. Okay. All right, I will leave that for a moment before I fiddle with the lever. Uh, the brake, I think this is the brake, um, goes into that hole just there on the side. Um, it's keyed into the position. In fact, we could probably pop that in now. It's only going to go in one way, which is the right way. That's, that's pretty much it. That's going to go like that. So, yeah, it looks good. 
All right, I'll glue that. And that is the end of step 10, finally. All done. Okay, and then we can uh, do what remains of step 11 that we haven't done yet. All right, I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so step 11, which I'll put up in the corner there, we'll finish off what we haven't done. Um, obviously, we did the shock absorbers to help getting the uh, chain and sprocket on. So that's all done. And now we're going to move on and do the kickstart, which there's the kickstarter. That's already painted. I did the rubber black for the grip on that. This here is a brake. This is the rear brake. Um, and that comes with a little spring, which will attach to the main frame and go through there. So that will actually, well, it should actually work. Good. Um, there's also a screw which will go in through here. And that goes through the frame as well. Um, the little foot piece I've got on there, it's not glued on. It's just sitting there. Um, I'm going to do that the same rubber black like every other foot piece just to make it stand out. So I'm going to, first I'll glue that on and, uh, and then I'll paint that black and then we can fit all this. Now that little spring doesn't look too tricky to put on. Just uh, you can see there's a little peg sitting off there and that's where it's going to hook onto. Pretty much just like that. And then the other end will go, uh, like I said, onto that little loop on that. And uh, that goes up there uh let me just see how's this go uh yeah the screw's going to go through there yeah it shouldn't be a problem shouldn't be a problem it goes under the footrest which is unusual it's actually going to be lower on the bike so that's going to go like that it's like pretty much sitting in there like that okay that's what i want no problem <laughs> all right uh i will do this and we'll come back and have a look at it all right and then in this video we'll be able to get some paint on the uh fuel tank and the and the front and rear guards some of that uh, rum raisin all right back in a sec okay welcome back so I've finished all those parts of step 11. Um, you can see we've got uh, this linkage in here, which is uh, the foot brake for the rear. Um, I put on, uh, I think I put that on, did I put, no, what else did I put on? Uh, oh, the kick start, which is folded in, that's sitting up there like that, that's the kick start. Okay, uh, this with the spring on it, look at that. See the spring in there? Brilliant. There's something going to connect to that. I'm not sure what that is yet, but it probably goes to the brakes. So really cool. Um, other than that, it's all on. It's all good. Um, now we're up to step 12. Now I can tell you I've just painted the fuel tank and the guards in our rum raisin. Oh my god, it looks beautiful. It really does. I've literally done it 10, 15 minutes ago. I want to leave it for a little bit longer. It's in a dust proof container. So I want to let it dry a bit more, um, but then I'll bring it in here and we'll have a look at it. Of course, that's not complete yet because we still got to put our 2K gloss on top, which will be another day. I want that to dry properly, but uh, we'll have a look anyway at uh, how, how really nice that color's come up. All right, so um, I shall put this back in the box because we don't need to use access that for just a while a little while um step 12 i'll put that up in the corner there and you can see working on the rear wheel there's also the oh there it is the brake um, rear brake rod that's that piece that i thought would attach to there so that that's really good um, and of course the rim and the tire 
So let's do that uh, rear brake rod first. I'll get the parts off. There's only three parts to it. And um, we'll have a look and see what they look like. We'll be back in a sec. Okay, so here's our parts for the um, rear brake rod. Which pretty much that will hook onto that piece I saw on the bike. And then we've got these parts that connect together and sit like that. Okay. And they sit in there. So that looks pretty good. I think the only place we need to glue that is in there. So I'm just going to scrape them. Scrape that a little bit, and that's how we get a good connection. Probably super glue that also, and uh, put them together. Okay, again, be back in a sec. Okay, so that's done. Um, you just got to be careful where you get your glue so that it doesn't stop this from rotating. We want that to fit properly, but that's glued together fine. We'll put that aside now because we don't use that. Till the following step 13 so we'll put that away and now we're going to work on the um the wheels the rear wheel the tire the rim so uh they're all on the b sprue except one g so uh let's have a look got here b sprue obviously we need these would be number 13 is this one 13, 14, one of these, 22, and a B6, one of those. All right, let's get them off. One, that's 13, uh, 14, one, 22, one and is that it and b6 up here and we got two b6s which one there we go b6 and then the g25 where's that um, G is a chrome one because they're all the alloy. 25, was it? Yes. 25 is there. There it is there. Okay. Snip that off. All right. I'm done. Um, I'll just clean up the little bits of plastic nubs off of these. And then we'll decide uh, we're most likely going to um, spray these. The aluminium it's gonna look better and match with everything else but we might be able to put a fair bit of it together because it's all going to be aluminium anyway so let me uh clean these up and i'll be back shortly okay so i got the real the rims ready i've just got to glue these parts together here and then that will glued into the center there and this i've already attached that which will go through the whole lot and that's done and then we put the tire on so it says so um yeah let me just extra thin around on the inside of that rim yeah Don't have to be too neat considering the tire is going to be covering most of this. Okay. Uh, I'll put the rest of this together and I'll come back when we're putting the tire on. How's that? Yeah. Take that off. Okay. Back again in a second. Okay, that went together quite easy. Um, now I'm just going to go paint it before I put the tire on. And there's our tire. And uh, yeah, should be fine. 
Okay, so I'll do this, uh, the aluminium outlaw paints. And uh, we'll come back. And actually, when I come back, we'll have a look at the rum raisin uh, fenders and, and uh, tank that I've painted up. All right, hang, hang about. Back in a second for that. Okay, so we're back. And there's our color on there. Come up real nice. There it is on the spoon that I did a test first. Then we've got on the guards here, which I'll bring it down because it's focusing down more to the mat. If you can see how that looks. And what I've just noticed bringing it in here is I can actually see a bit of chrome on the edge there coming through. Oh, and more down there. So I'm going to have to give these a second coat. Uh, this part, this one looks okay. So, yeah, that looks fine. Um, and the tank looks okay, although I now see some chrome coming through around the um, fuel fueling bit there. <laughs> so, yeah. Gosh. You know, I really thought I layered it on quite thick too. Anyway, I guess not. Um, and what else do we have in this one? This looks okay. I don't see any chrome coming through under that. Which is strange because I I um didn't just spray this over the chrome, I sprayed this over um the primer. So I actually primed these first. So somehow I've missed in there. But anyway, uh, a second coat won't hurt. Um I'll give them another half hour or so to dry properly and then I'll come back and yeah sorry they're not focused because they're raised so high up but, uh, yeah ah, that's come up good and of course on top of that we'll be putting on this uh, diamond clear which will certainly um, bring up the, uh, the gloss uh, mirror finish we want okay back in a second Hey everybody, I'm back. Uh, this is all dry now. Done that in the aluminium. It's come up looking nice. As always, now we're just going to put this tire on. Um, so pretty much just feed it on like this. It's very soft, so I'm sure it's not going to be any problem. And that's it. There it is. Tire is on. Excellent. That's all I have to do with that. Um, yeah. Happy days. Now. Now what? <laughs> uh, that's step twelve. That and the um, rear brake rod that we did. So let's. Um, now the painting, I haven't done that yet. I've just let that dry, but I'm going to do that second coat shortly and then uh, and get rid of that little bit of chrome that was coming through. Okay, so step 13, we'll put that up in the corner here for a sec. And not much to this really. It's basically just putting on what we just made. The brake rod next on and the tire goes on. And we need our little tool again. So, here's our little tool for tightening nuts. We need to get that, which is the last rod that's in here. Uh, there we go. There it is there. I've already got a nut on there for some reason. But we need a second nut. Uh, there's that. Um, what else? Oh, there is the pieces there b45 there's two of those if i remember those parts um b45 let's have a look there it is and 45 is uh yeah they are there and they're basically the tensioners that you adjust to tighten the chain by pulling the wheel back up back yeah i mean geez they think of everything don't they Incredible. Take two of them off. Uh, 
I'm just taking a bit extra on there because I just want to see how they connect. There we go. And uh, I think that's it. That's all we need. Yeah. Um, yeah, that looks fine. Um, I better trim that up. That's all. It's good. And that looks fine. All right. All right, let's uh, bring the bike down. And have it in the same direction as our instructions. Ah, okay. So we don't need that rod because I've already put one through. Is that right? Yeah, because I was just testing um, when I was putting the chain on. So we don't need this, but we do need the two nuts, I think. Yes, we do. We'll put that back. Obviously, that'll be for the front wheel. Um, all right, let's see how we go. And first of all, we need to take that back out. Right. Okay, that wants to slide in. And line up. Okay, it's falling off. <laughs> Let me do this off camera so I can get in there properly. I'll be back in a sec. Okay, I managed to um, get that sprocket in under the chain guard that it popped out, which left it all out of alignment. That's all good now. So now I just need to put these little nuts on here. We have one on this side. Good. Now we go over the other side carefully and attach this one. That's good. That tightened up that whole wheel really well. Okay. I'm wondering if I can leave that a little bit loose. Will it let the wheel turn? Let's just check. Undo that a little bit. Undo this one. Yeah. Yeah, they'll turn. But I do need to re glue the shock absorber that came off back in there and glue this bottom end as well oh and this screw down here pops out too that we got to glue earlier All right hard parts done just touching up these with bits of glue i'll be back in a sec okay progressing well just going to put these other little adjustment pieces on which uh Pretty much just sit in there like that. I think that's right. Let me have a look. Uh, oh, I see. So the nut goes over that. Oh, oh I got gotcha. you. 
right we move okay unfortunately i have to undo those again which weren't too much of a drama but i'll take that off again <laughs> here we go dropping things okay so i basically have to put the nut on top of these and these clamp down with those onto the frame all right i'll do that and be back okay so that um rear brake lever runs behind there it clips into the top of this and then it sits down there's a hole in that drum on the wheel and if you leave it like that then this works okay because it's spring active it's got the spring there remember and you can see it works fine but you have to be very careful because there's not much holding that on <laughs> and it doesn't tell you there we go it could fall off if you're not careful but if i glue it if i glue that in position then this ain't going to work because that won't move so it doesn't tell you on the instructions but yeah if you're building this don't glue that in yet to see if you can get that to sit like that and and get it to work i'm going to try and leave it like that because i like the way that works and hopefully it won't fall off but it doesn't look like it will it looks like it'll be okay yeah other than that we're done with that rear wheel um that rear wheel does not turn either as i figured out so you may as well go ahead and tighten these bolts right up in fact, if I tighten these up a little bit more, that might press against that and stop that coming off. So that'd be a good thing. Because there's a there's a piece of metal that goes into that drum so that it's in the right position, in which case the wheel won't turn. Um, so yeah, I'm thinking now if I just uh get my little get my little tool, tighten this, it might um pull that in a little bit closer and hold that lever on no it doesn't there's still a bit of clearance there but i think that'll be fine yeah all right so yeah looks good eh that's great right done all right that's uh step 13 i think yep it is double checking yes all right excellent hey right yeah um what am i going to do now right 14. step 14 we're starting on the outer tube why they call it that i don't know um blinkers we're doing blinkers lenses uh and there's a left and right side these look like the front shock absorbers we're working on and these are something i also want to get painted up in that rum raisin as well shock absorbers so um, we'll look at doing that but in the meantime um i need to go repaint those um the fenders and the tank and then when we come back, um, we'll have these parts um, off and we'll start putting these together for step 14. Okay, back shortly. Okay, welcome back, everybody. Um, I've continued on with this uh, step 14 a little bit here. So I took off the um, indicators and I've glued them together. Pretty simple, really. Just got to make sure there's a slot in the top there that you need to not only line up with the little metal piece inside but with the lens as well because that's going to attach their attachment points all right so but that that looks that looks really good it's nice to have them already pre-colored and have to paint them up so very good um so we're doing the front shock absorbers here uh this one i haven't applied the um extra thin cement yet i'll do that now just run it up each side um they go together quite very well actually 
Um, what I did do was I used a sanding stick and just sanded the um, part there where the glue is going to make contact just to make sure it stays together. There's the connection point there so they you can't go wrong. And I've used a couple of pegs to just hold it in position while that's going to glue. And um, the idea with this is I want to paint this up in that rum raisin as well. So, um, yeah, I'll be um, priming it and doing the same. In fact, if I'd, have, if I'd have looked ahead in the instructions, I probably should have done this when I was um, doing the tank and the fenders. But um, it does seem this is the, the, the last major piece that I'll need to do um, the rem, rum raisin. But uh, I think that's going to look really nice. Um, yeah, but I want to get this prepped too. So I can also uh, hit this with the um, 2K diamond clear that I'm going to do the other parts with. Uh, might as well do all these as well. Okay, so these will just go set aside um, because these uh, connect. There's a connection point uh, here for, for one of the indicators. And uh, I think they're on each side or each end. I'm not too sure. Um, oh, no, there's another piece we've got to get off. L. Oh, no, that looks like the horn. I'm not sure. That could be the horn there. Uh, yeah, so two of the indicators go on. The other two are probably for the, um, for the rear of the bike. We'll see. We'll see. All right. Um, I'll take these two pieces off, prep them up like that, glue them together, and uh, we'll be back in a sec. Hey there. Just going to quickly show you. I've just uh, prepped these parts. Um, I took the seam lines off, just uh, lightly sanded them with uh, 1500 grit, and then just cleaned up the parts. They're ready to paint now. This is the horn. So I'll go and paint that black. Um, the attachment point on this is that little piece there. And I'll leave that chrome. That's fine. Another good reason for painting these up rum raisin is that they're nicely chromed, but they're not chromed on the inside of this. And this is the support that holds the headlight. You can actually see the inside of that. So it's a shame they haven't managed to chrome on that side as well. I don't know how they do that. I mean, they've got all this piece chromed all the way around, and yet that bit's not. Anyway, we'll be spraying the whole thing, so problem solved. All right, I'm going to go and do that now and uh, get it all prepped up so that it's ready with the, uh, the fender and the fuel tank. Those parts are pretty much ready to get their clear coat. Um, I'm just going to give Jason a call from uh, Outlaw Paints Give me a bit of a tips and advice on spraying the 2K clear, which I haven't done before. He he said definitely, he said, when you're ready to paint, give me a ring. And he'll give me a bit of uh, insider instructions. <laughs> anyway, that's a service for you, isn't it? So, uh, yeah, I'll go paint these. And then I'll bring back the, um, the other parts that I did the second coat of rum raisin on when I realized that some of the underside, the paint underneath was showing through and the chrome. We'll see how they came up. All right, we're back in a sec. Okay, here we go. So here's our parts with the second coat on them. They've come up really nice. So they're ready for the 2K clear to go on them. All right. So, um, yeah, I'm going to get that uh, those front forks sprayed up the same. And then do it all in one shot. There we go. It's a nice color. It's going to look really good with that gloss on it. Get that shine up properly. Okay, so now, um, yeah, until I get them painted, I've just primed them. Um, we may as well move on to step 15, which I'll just adjust my camera because I had to make sure the focus was right so you could see these properly. We'll be back in a second. Okay, so step 15 is the actual headlight. And it looks like there's quite a few parts to this. Um, yeah, there does seem to be a few. It's funny, the top of the headlight there seems to have a decal that goes in there. It looks like the um, speedometer. 
that's a different sort of setup. Um, yeah, so we'll be able to put all that together. Obviously, we won't be able to put it on yet, but we can get the parts ready that go on the shock absorbers for when that's all painted up and ready to go on. Okay, so um, as usual, I'll go cut these parts off the sprue, get them all laid out here, and uh, we'll make a start on them. Okay, we'll be back in a sec. Okay, there's all our parts for the headlight. Um, I've cleaned them all up, but I still have to scrape off the, the connection areas where the glue where the glue is going to go. Um, otherwise, that's all ready to put together, which I will do now. I'll come back when I'm about to put the decal on. The little decal goes in here for the um, uh, the tachometer speedometer. So we'll do that. Um, other than that, there's there is one piece here, this tiny little bit here. It's got to be black with uh, silver at the top. I will most likely hand brush that, hand paint those. It's going to be much easier. It's just such a small piece, um, and that'll be fine. All right, so I'll, I'll put all that together. We're we'll back in a sec. Okay, we're back, and I've just got the decal on. Um, it was pretty tricky. The trickiest part was getting it in there straight, which I've done. It's gone in. Um, sitting it down flat and then getting the glass over the top, the plastic, clear plastic. And I've just put that in there. So that's just sitting in there just fine. I'm not going to touch it, <laughs> but it, it's gone on well. What I did was I've used my um, MIG ammo, this is it here, ultra glue. This is for canopies and clear parts. Great stuff. Um, I keep it separate in a little container like that, which is all watered down, and it can literally work from this for months, and uh, that bottle lasts forever. So um, I used that, I also used it, applied it, because that plastic is so small, I'm using the Icky Sticky Micro Brush Applicator, so it's 1.2 mil, right? So they're really good for putting the decal down, first of all, getting that smoothed out, and then coming along with some of that ultra glue and doing around the edge of the plastic and put it on, that ultra glue dries perfectly clear. So once that's dry, which it's starting to now, um, you won't see anything at all. That'll be perfectly clear in there. Okay, uh, ickysticky.com.au, I think. There it is up there. Yeah, uh, for all these things, uh, very handy stuff. Very, very handy. All right, um, so for that, I'm just going to let that dry. I'm just going to leave that sitting there. Yeah, there we go, I knock it out, but there it is, it's all right. Um, the headlight's in, main glass is in, uh, and it's all, sorry, there we go, you can see better. <laughs> there it is, looks great. Okay, I haven't put that other piece on yet because it is here, dry. I just hand painted that gloss black. I'll give it a touch of uh, silver on the top like it says in the instructions and then place that in its position. Okay, so far so good. Uh, I'll get this stuff cleaned up and we'll have a look at what we can do next. Okay, welcome back again. So, got some parts off for the rest of those front forks on step 15. Now, we can't, we can't obviously put them on the front forks because we need to paint them which is what a lot of these pieces are waiting for. Um, but we can attach, I don't even know what that is, but this little piece connects to that, and then it goes onto this bracket, and then it sits on here. And uh, yeah, well, you can see the instructions up there and see what I mean. All right, once, once that on, then that's as far as we can go. So I'll do that, but that's as far as we can go with that, because... Um, we can't put anything on the forks. And we can't go to step 16 because step 16 is actually um, putting the lower half of the forks on with the, um, there's a couple of springs on the inside. Because these actually look like they're working. Here they are, they're working front forks like the rear. And the front guard's going on this as well. Uh, there's a quick look at step 16. You can see what's gonna happen there. So unfortunately in this video we didn't get a chance to do the clear coat but I promise that's going to happen in the next video because we need those parts to continue. 
Okay, I mean, I could step ahead and go to 17 and put the front wheel together, but we don't want to end up with bits and pieces everywhere. We'll keep try and keep this all in order as we've been doing. Okay, so I will end the video at this point here. When we come back, I promise you we'll be, we'll be spraying with our 2K Diamond Clear. And... Uh, and uh, I'm looking forward to how that goes on. And then once all that's uh, dried up and right, we can attach all these things and put things a few more bits and pieces together. Okay, guys, thank you all. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notifications bell if you get to get notified of uh, each video as they come out. They're coming out quite often at the moment. Um, thanks for uh, giving us a thumbs up, everybody. That's great. And uh, your comments are welcome below. Uh, keep those comments coming. It keeps YouTube happy and helps spread the channel out a bit more and a bit wider. Okay, guys, um, thank you all, and uh, I'll see you in the next part, which will be part six. Okay, bye for now. Cheers all.